Good afternoon, we're back with more Marvel Champions, and today we'll be testing out Star-Lord. We'll be playing against Drang on Expert Difficulty, and then we'll try him out against the Collector. I'm trying an Aggression Star-Lord deck, and we'll see how it goes. I like Star-Lord in concept, and I think he's got the potential to be very good against some scenarios. Sand seems mostly fine. We'll discard Element Gun. Okay. So let's get started. We can search the deck and discard pile for a copy of Element Gun as part of the setup. We'll go ahead and go Power of Aggression toe to toe to get Brawn in play. Energy toe to toe for Element Gun. And we'll use Mockingbird to fire the element gun. Attack with Brawn, which removes one threat. We'll use the Milano to thwart. Should have flipped to Star Lord before doing some of this because it was hero actions. We didn't have anything left to do in hero form, and then we'll do two damage with Star Lord. Two threat, one charge up, one attack, which we're just going to face tank. Give the villain a tough status card. If he already has a tough, he doesn't, so it's one, two, three, four, five damage. Ouch. And then one encounter card, which is Badoon Grunt, which deals one face down encounter card. So, Hercules costs 5 right now. I'm actually thinking about using Star-Lord's ability here. Be taking 3 encounter cards. I don't have anything else to combo it with. But I could get Hercules out. Alternately, I could just get Spider-Man in play. Let's just do that. Let's go... One, two, three, and get Spider-Man out. We'll give him plus two attack. We'll use Brawn to ping the, damage, the toughness off the boss. Remove one threat. We'll use Star-Lord to deal two damage. Milano can thwart. Spider-Man attacks for four. And we'll fire the element gun for three. And draw five. So we got two threat, and then we got one attack. I think that attack will have to go on Brawn. Now I'll put it on Spider-Man. If this activation is an attack, the, attacks, the attack gains overkill. So 1, 2, 3, 4 to 1, 2. Okay, and then we got another encounter card. First one, the villain attacks you. That will have to go on Brawn. Rip Brawn. Second, Power Siphon, Exhaust the Milano. Okay. So, let's go with discard these three to play bad boy. Use Daring Escape to fire the element gun. Well, we, we'll put him into phase three first. Discard four. There's an engineer. Grunt. Okay. It's going to give an extra charge up, and then we'll use the element gun to take out the engineer, and we'll draw five. I haven't drawn sliding shot yet, so no opportunity for like a big play. There are three in the deck. So I may hang on to Daring Escape and try to make like a game-ending play. 
We got two threat, we got a charge up, which is two indirect damage. And we got an attack from Drang. So we'll use Bad Boy here. Cancel the damage, change to Alter Ego, draw two cards. And then the Badoon Grunt will scheme for two. Then we got an encounter card, which is Exhaust Your Identity card and Surge for a Warlord. Well, I got Sliding Shot, so how big of a play can I make here? Got Groot for two damage, Star Lord for two, that's four, five, six, seven. Plus 9 is 16, plus Tigra. Can, do, can I afford all of that? We can go 1, 2, 3 for Groot. We can flip. We can go Daring Escape to ready him and draw a card and deal an encounter card. And it's another Daring Escape. That's great. So we'll attack. Ready him again. Deal a card. Draw a card. <laughs> another sliding shot. Okay. Now it's going to be ridiculous because we can go Star-Lord's Discount to play a sliding shot. The Star Lord's discount brings another one into play, so it's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then we can use Genius and Tigra to play another sliding shot, which would end it, but we would end it anyway with Groot, Element Gun, and Star Lord. So that will end Drang. That's like a best case scenario combo for Star Lord, where when you're in phase two, you can just finish off a boss from 18 plus HP in one turn. So we'll move on to the collector and see how that goes. And we're back against the collector. So let's see how Star Lord does here. We owe one card to the collection. Minus three health rather than put another card in the collection. Hmm, we could start out with a big turn. Get rid of Element Gun because we draw another one anyway. And then we'll use the setup to grab a copy of Element Gun. So, here we go. We'll use Power of Aggression, get out Wasp with 2 HP. Actually, I don't think we can do that. Because we have to get out Element Gun to be able to use Sliding Shot. So we we'll go 1, 2, 3 for the Element Gun. Then we'll attack with Star Lord. Use Daring Escape. Okay, there's another one. Attack again. And I don't think we need another Daring Escape here. So we'll just go ahead and use Star Lord's ability for minus three cost, and we'll sliding shot. His ability brings another one in, so that's going to be 9 damage. And then we'll use Wasp for Element Gun to put Collector into Phase 2. Top card into the Collection, plus 2 Threat. If we survive this, we'll be in fairly decent shape. And we'll draw 4. So we got 1 Threat, 1 Attack from the Collector. It's going to be 5 damage. And then one more encounter card. So that's 3 encounter cards. A sentry bot. 
stay a while, collector attacks you with plus one attack, and that's going to end this attempt. So that's the risk with that type of hand. Let's get reset and try again. Alrighty. Second attempt on the collector. We got one card for the collection and three HP. How much of this do I want to keep? Uh, I could keep most of it. We'll go one, two, three for brawn. I can grab a copy of Element Gun. Um, actually, before brawn, I'll use. Tigra and Nowhere to play Starlord's, or no, just uh, Tigra and Starlord's Helmet to play Nowhere. And then I'll play Brawn and I can draw a card after I flip to Starlord because Brawn is a Guardian thanks to Starlord and you get a draw card when you play a Guardian. And then we'll go one damage, one threat removal, and two damage. And then we'll draw three. So one threat, one attack, we'll face tank it, so it's going to be for four. One encounter card. Star Shark, that quick strikes for three. We'll have to have Brawn take that. Ouch. And I think we'll have to use Nova Prime here, which means using Star Lord's ability. So we'll use Star Lord's ability and then go. Nova Prime, because Nova Prime defeats a non-elite minion. Brings an encounter card in for Star-Lord's ability. You can also draw a card with Nowhere. And then I can attack for 1-2, attack for 3. Draw 2. So 1 threat, 1 attack, which will go on Brawn. After this activation ends, reveal this card. So Brawn goes off to the collection. And when the collector takes damage, this biogram image is going to go off to the collection. And we got two encounter cards coming. Star Shark, that's going to be a quick strike for three, and that will have to be. It's indirect damage, so it'll have to go like one, two, three. Oops. That one is Psionic Ghost, and that's going to confuse Star Lord. Oof, this is rough. Well, the, f the downside to Star Lord, he can put up a lot of damage, but the downside is his defense, because he doesn't have any stun, confuse, or any kind of defensive cards. It's probably designed to be played with Drax and or Groot, but those champions have their own problems. Groot's being the forced response of removing counters when he takes damage, and Drax's being the small hand size, and the fact that he only gains vengeance counters when he gets attacked. And uh, Star-Lord and Rocket have almost zero defensive ability. Gamora has her counter card for defense, but that's it. And she doesn't have any kind of stun. So anyway, this looks like a loss. Um, yeah, I don't have a way to defeat this Star Shark, really. I can defeat it, but not the Psionic Ghost also. We can try with Hulk and just see what we get. Okay, it's strength, so that's plus two. And Hulk draws a card thanks to Nowhere. Um, we can go... Get out the element gun. Use Nova Prime. Take out the Star Shark. Star Lord for 
two on the psionic coast. Flip to alter eco. Draw six. So one threat and the collector schemes for five. And that will end the game. Okay, we'll try one more time. Here we go. Um, what of this do I want to keep? I have one card for the collection. Don't want to keep Element Gun. Probably won't keep Bad Boy. Alright, not happy to see sliding shots so early. We could try a big play with it. So we'll go grab Element Gun. Uh, we'll go... One, two, three, and play Element Gun. We'll flip, we'll do two damage, we'll use Daring Escape. Ready him and draw a card, there's another Daring Escape. So we'll do two damage. Ready him and draw a card. Do two damage. We'll use his discount for a sliding shot. Push the boss into phase two, so that's going to be again ending card to the collection, two threat. But three encounter cards coming. Then we'll just go. I think we'll use Wasp deal three damage and we'll draw three. Alternately I could use Spider-Man and Nova Prime to play Wasp and then have a chump blocker. I think that's probably safer. Let's play Wasp with two HP, attack for three and then draw five. So we got one threat, we got an attack incoming against Wasp. It's going to be for five. And that's going to put Wasp into the collection and put one threat on the main scheme. And then we got four encounter cards. If we survive, we're in decent shape. Stay a while, Collector attacks you with plus one attack. Psionic Ghost comes into play, 3 damage, actually 4 damage, and then the top card of the deck goes into the collection. The villain attacks you, 3 damage, plus 1 damage for the boost. Psionic, or the Servant Bot, and then Master Plan. Can I deal 18 damage here? No. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 is my best. So, I'm going to exhaust Star Lord and take a card out of the collection. Uh, we'll go ahead and discard Jet Boots to use Element Gun. Actually, I don't think I can take a card out of the collection. I think I have to risk it. Because I think I have to reduce the threat. Since I'm going to have to flip to Alter Ego here. I can go 1, 2, 3 for Groot. I'm going to keep toe to toe. And then we'll use Groot to deal 2 damage. We'll just have to. Yeah, I can't survive flipping to Alter Ego, and I can't survive tanking 
unless I get a zero boost card on the collector. So one threat, one attack by the collector. Nope, it's for four. So rip Groot. Now if I hadn't attacked with Groot and just used him to tank, there'd be plus two HP on the collector. Groot would defend for four and then he heals for two. And then the Psionic Ghost would attack for two and I have nowhere to put it except Star-Lord with one. And then an encounter card which would be Biogram Image. I can't do any more damage to the collector before I clear a card from the collection. Uh, we'll use Power of Regression and the Hero turn to do that. So the collector should have done plus one damage for the boost icon there. Um, so we'll use Power of Regression to clear Sliding Shot out of the collection. We'll go toe to toe for Iron Heart and draw a card. Use her plus the element gun to take out the psionic ghost and we'll draw four. So one threat, one attack from the collector, one encounter card, just two more encounter cards. Stay a while is another attack. Put screwed into the collection and also the top card of the deck into the collection and that will end this attempt. So how good is Star-Lord? Well he's not top tier and the reason why he's not top tier is the three heroes that I have currently covered that I consider to be top tier are Doctor Strange, Captain America, and Ant-Man and they all have very strong defense. Doctor Strange has the ability to stun, the ability to confuse, and the ability to grant toughness to up to three characters. Which means you can tank a lot of boss attacks in the same turn. If you have multiple allies out, you could potentially tank like four or five boss attacks in the same turn and be alright with that toughness. And then you have the addition of the stun, the confuse, and your usual slate of allies that you play in, like Leadership, Doctor Strange. So that's very strong defense relative to Star-Lord, who we just looked at, who merely has allies. He has no defensive cards in his kit. And he starts with relatively low HP and only one defense. Then you have Captain America, who has two defense plus one with his shield. He has the ability to ready himself, which means you can block an attack with him pretty much every round and still have your basic action available if you choose. And then he also has shield block, which allows you to cancel all damage and then for zero cost. And then he also has heroic strike, which gives the ability to stun the boss. So he has a strong, strong defensive abilities. Again, compared to Star-Lord who has none of those tools. And then we have Ant-Man, who has defense of 3 when he's in giant form. He also has the ability to heal for 2 every time he switches to giant form when he has his helmet out. And he has the ability to heal 2 whenever he uses a pin particle. And he's in giant form. And he automatically heals for 1 when he switches to Alter Ego, which is the least of his healing abilities. I rank Ant-Man third behind Captain America and Doctor Strange because that's not a really strong defensive kit, but it is much stronger than Star-Lord's, who again has no defensive ability abilities at all. Same problem with Rocket Raccoon, and to a certain extent Gamora. Gamora does have the counter card, I forget what it is, it cancels three damage. That's good, that's one tool but it's only one tool. She can defend for two, but she lacks any kind of ability to ready herself, for, so it's not real good to use her ability to ready. If we're gonna be using our hero to defend a lot, we wanna be able to ready them so that we can also use them to thwart or attack if we need to. So Gamora can defend and attack for two, which isn't that great, but she has no ability to ready herself afterwards. She has her counter card, which is strong, 
but then she doesn't have any ability to stun or confuse, so she has only one of the three defensive tools that we'd like, those being the ability to stun or confuse, the ability to defend for three, and or the ability to use some kind of event to cancel damage such as backflip or Drax's payback or uh, the ability to give your allies toughness or some kind of extra defensive ability, the ability to heal. So Gamora has one of the three tools but that's all. Drax has one of the three tools. That's payback. But he only defends for two and he can heal with Mantis, but only with Mantis, and that's a one of card. And he doesn't have the ability to stun. Groot doesn't have the ability to stun or confuse. And yes, he has the ability to cancel damage with his growth counters, but we need those for all the other cards, so we're loath to do it. He does have the defense of three, so basically each of the Guardians have at best one defensive ability, and we'd like them to have three in order for them to be S tier in solo play. And that's why they're not S tier. Now even the ability to have strong defense doesn't guarantee that a hero is going to be S tier because they also need the ability to thwart. Spider-Man has defense of three and he has backflip and he has webbed up to stun but his thwarting in his kit is very weak. He thwarts for only one and the only way he has to remove threat other than that is his Spider Tracer, which is an unwieldy card to use, unreliable for removing threat. Now, as the Justice scheme continues to add good cards, Spider-Man will get better and better. Really, all the Justice scheme is lacking right now is strong allies. Wiccan was a very good addition, but it needs a couple more strong allies. And when it gets a couple more strong allies, or when the basic set gets a couple more strong allies, then Spider-Man will be in a very good place, because he already has the strong defensive kit, he just lacks thwarting. Doctor Strange has the strong defensive kit, and he can thwart with, with images of Icone, or with his other hero card, I forget the name of which I forget off the top of my head, but it thwarts for three plus boost icons. He also has thwart for two built into his hero card. Same with Captain America, in addition to his defensive abilities, he can thwart for two, three with fearless determination, and he can ready himself so he can thwart twice. And Ant-Man has the ability to thwart as well, because when he switches to Tiny, he has two threat, and he automatically removes one threat. And then he also has his threat removal card, which adds additional threat removal if you have Army of Ants. So Spider-Man will be strong, I think, at some point when Justice has the tools to make him strong, but he does need Justice because of the lack of thwarting, and that is why he's bad kind of early in the game's life, but will likely be good at some point if they continue this trend of adding good cards to Justice. But Star-Lord and the other Guardians are not in a good place. They're fun to play, at least with Star-Lord and Gamora. They're above average, Star-Lord and Gamora are but they lack two of the three defensive tools and that makes them very difficult to play against high difficulty quests where you can expect a lot of the time to take multiple attacks from the boss in the same round. They will need help from the aspects in order to be good and the aspect cards that get added tend to be inefficient and therefore not that good with the exception now of Justice cards getting added, which are quite good. And if they continue to do that, they'll make at least one hero who was not previously that viable pretty decent, but we'll see. So, thank you for watching.